So you ready for this? Christianity isn't merely a religion. Now, how can I say it isn't one? That is not what I said. I said it is not merely one. For authentic Christianity is a relationship that leads to religious practice. Well, my name's Charles. Grab yourself some coffee and let's talk. See, religion is that set of rules and sacred teachings, observances, rituals, you know, all those wonderful things that must be done by those who are practicing that religion, who subscribe to a particular religion. However, the emphasis here is always on what that person must or mustn't do. Now, yes, that's a bit basic as far as descriptions go, as far as a definition goes, but it is more or less very accurate and, for now, it is also adequate. Practices done by the individual. The focus is on the individual. And, you know, while Christianity does work itself out in religious practices, this is not all there is to Christianity. See, these practices are not even primary to the Christian faith. For Christianity is primarily a relationship with Christ. Yes, it is one that leads to a way of life, one from which all of a Christian's religious practices arise. And yet, this relationship encompasses his or her whole life. It doesn't confine itself to what happens inside the church building once a week or twice a week. See, true Christianity influences how this follower of Christ actually lives his or her whole life. Very holistic. And so, in Christianity, this relationship is the primary thing. It drives everything. Now, as we know, to be a Christian, uh, rather simply stated, means to be a follower of Christ. See, Jesus gives us many examples of the things that we must do if we are to be followers of him. And yet, and yet, if we are not careful, we can actually lose sight of the most primary example that he gives that being the foundation for everything that he did. See, we do need to follow him in this example as well, or we are not truly, authentically followers of his, as, you know, we will not be fully following his example. And what is this primary example, you ask? It is this that he remains in the Father's love. And that is why he does everything else that he does. And it is because of this, that he, you know, of this remaining in the Father's love, that he is one with the Father. And that he wants us, you know, his followers, to also remain in his love so that we can also become one with him and the Father. Even as they are. See, relationship is everything. Without relationship, there is no Christianity, no matter what else you do. Indeed, this was Jesus' main complaint against the very religious people of his day, you know, the Pharisees. They did the religion very, very, very well indeed. And yet, Jesus said they missed the mark. You know, they were the blind leading the blind. See, they had no relationship with God for all that religion. Now, you might be saying, Ah, okay. I get it. I understand what you're saying. You're saying that all we need is the power of love, right? You know, to simply sit around, sing kumbaya, you know, maybe pass out a few flowers. (gasps) Give that spiritual little hug to everybody, and everything will be okay. 
Yeah. Not so much. See, for relationships are very messy things. And true love often brings pain to the one who is loving. See, we see this in Gethsemane, where Jesus was not at all excited about having to go to the cross. But his love compelled him to do so. And so he went. See, love is not romantic mush. There is more to love than mere feelings. And it's interesting. James even warns against thinking that it is nothing more than feelings. No feelings, nothing more than feelings. <laughs> he says that it is no good to see a brother or a sister in need. And by the way, brother and sister, very relational terms, don't you think? <laughs> but anyway, he says it is no good to see them in need you know, being without clothing to wear or food to eat, and then merely being mushy and simply saying, Kumbaya, brother. Be well. Be warm. Be at peace. For God loves you very much. See, doing this is no good. It simply will not do. I mean, while it may make you feel good about yourself for, you know, at least I care. It's only sentimental mush. Love actually helps those in need, helps them get what they need. Indeed, if your faith does not lead you to do what you can to help these folks, it is a dead faith. Indeed, it is no true faith whatsoever. Oh yeah. And James is the one saying this. In fact, he goes on to show just how relationship-based Christianity actually is when he tells us what God considers to be pure and undefiled religion, which is to take care of the orphan and the widow in their times of distress. And he even says that we are doing religion right when we follow the royal law which is to love your neighbor as yourself. See, to love, by definition, involves relationships. It is what matters. See, this royal law, love, is what leads to all authentic Christian religious activities and beliefs. You know, so for religious practices to be authentically Christian, to be an authentic following of Jesus' examples, they must be done from love. I mean, Paul even says this, uh, though a little differently, when he says that no matter what he does, if it is not from love, it is obnoxious and worthless. Now you might say, yeah, but isn't doing stuff important in religion, in Christianity? Don't we have to do things? Yes. It is very important. Yes, there are things to do, but it is the why that is even more important. Why are you doing these things? Remember the Pharisees I mentioned just a little bit ago? Jesus says something very surprising and interesting about them. He says that unless our righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, we will in no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, when I first heard that, you know, I, I, I just had to wonder just how hard could it possibly be to have more righteousness than those legalistic whitewashed tombs, you know, those who were the blind leaders of the blind. I mean, that couldn't be too hard, right? See, those people who, <laughs> quite honestly, they were the ones who were the very devoutly, devoutly religious men of their day. And they actively sought to help other people be just as devoutly religious. They were the ones who were indeed dotting all of their I's and crossing all of their T's. They were studying scripture very intently. They could quote you chapter and verse. If you had a question, they could answer it. They had the religion nailed. Though, 
they still missed out on who Jesus, God, was. So, you know, how can my righteousness ever be more than that of the very religious people of the day, of, of Jesus' day? I mean, what can I possibly do to get the religion right and not miss out on who Jesus is? Well, John says something very interesting. He equates belief with love. He says that if you believe in Jesus, you do love the Father, and you also love his children as well, you know, our neighbors as well. Isn't that profound? He even says that if we do not love, we do not know God, for God is love. See, we have to love in order to be authentically Christian. If we do not love, we are not Christian at all, for we do not know God. Now again, how profoundly relational is that? Christianity is all about knowing God, which is to be loving God, which is to be loving our neighbor as ourselves. See, relationship is the basis for everything in the Christian faith. So there you go. There you have it, and there it is. Now you know why. The Christianity is not merely a religion. It is much, much more. It is a relationship that leads to religious practices. Yes, religion is involved. I'm not trying to say it's not uh, a, a religion as well. It's simply more than. See, there are indeed things to do. There are things to avoid. There are things to believe and to disbelieve, to practice and to observe. Yes, all of these things are true. And yet, these things are always secondary to loving God first, and then our neighbor as ourselves. And when we lose sight of this, of this primary example that Jesus left, we do so at our own peril. For to lose sight of this actually means to lose sight of Christ. And when this is done, we are no longer in the middle of the abundance of life Jesus came to give. So until next time, love simply, love wisely, and love well. And let Christ show you the abundance of life found in putting a relationship with him first, while profoundly leaving religion in second place. For that is where you will experience that French press style of faith. You know, one that is simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. One where the abundance of life Jesus came to give is truly found. So tell me what you think in the comments section below. Also, please click that like and the subscribe buttons. It means a lot if you do. And make sure to grab that little gray bell icon that pops up and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each and every time a new conversation is posted. And please, 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 please share this with a friend. For good coffee and good conversation loves good company. Also, also, in the description box below, uh, you know, for anybody who's interested, I will list all the Bible verses that I referenced in this video. So thank you for watching. And stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch up with you next time. Cheers.